Um, okay, good evening um, from Malaysia and Singapore and as well as Hong Kong. Uh, together today, we have uh, myself again. Uh, you see me whole day already. So uh, my, my name is HK. Uh, it's actually joined by Tom Chu and also J Jacob Phillips. Um, quick introduction on Jacob Phillips is that um, Jacob is actually uh, just relatively new to the art scene, I guess. Um, you've been doing some coloring work for criminals, uh, for Ed Brubaker as well as uh, Sean Phillips and, and a few of his graphic novels. So what are we actually doing today, Jacob? Um, yeah, so I'm just doing, working on a commission today um, yeah. for the Lost in Translation. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just uh, I'm doing a, a two headshots of uh, Bill Murray and Scott Johansson. So I'll just oh, show God, you I love that, that movie. Movie. as I go along. Yeah. Okay. Um, and meantime, we'll probably raise some question and um, and just ask you what we are actually doing. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, Tom, do you want to actually get it started? Get the ball rolling. Oh. Yeah, so congratulations on uh, that Texas Blood, actually. It, it's being launched soon, isn't it? How, how did that book come about? Uh, yeah, so it's out um, finally in a couple of weeks uh, at the end of the month. Um, it got delayed. It was going to come out at the end of May. But it, uh, mm, got, yeah. got pushed back a month because of the uh, pandemic. But um, yeah, it, it came about because um, Chris was originally doing it as um, as a film. Um, mm -hmm. and I did some concept work for it. Um, I did a series of five paintings, um, that what was it four paintings, a few paintings, nearly, um, that uh were used to sort of sell the uh sell the film and try and get some funding together, but um. Everything kept, he kept running into problems with it. And uh, I think one of his locations burned down and uh, he, the funding fell through. And I think he saw it as a sign that uh, the film was never meant to be. So, uh, <laughs> so he, he came back and he was like, well, I've already got this comic artist that, on board. So why don't I just do it as a comic? Um, and now it's all, and now it's uh, going well. So it's obviously the right choice. That that's interesting though because if it was a feature, is this going to be a limited series or is it going to be ongoing? Uh, it's ongoing. The so the first issue is based on the script of the film. Um, it was only a short a short film, um, and then everything past issue one was is is new, um, which is is just sort of uh, a starting off point for the for the series. So it's uh, ongoing. We're gonna, we're doing six issues, and then. Uh, taking a break and then coming back for some more. Mm. Well, I look forward to reading it. I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's got a lot of buzz thanks to, you know, Image pushing your books, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, I've got a question for you though, seeing as you're continuing the Phillips legacy, as you put it, how much would you say that your father's influenced, has influenced the work and your choice of work? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it must have done. Uh, because growing up, I was obviously surrounded by it constantly, so it's it's always feeding into everything, um, and I think I get a lot of a lot of the work that has come my way because I've been working as an illustrator before I start, mm -hmm. even started doing comics. Um, a lot of it was probably off the back of my dad and and putting things in um, in the back of Kill Be Killed and, and things like that, all the the backup essays illustrations, um, which you know, all based around crime films, pretty much. Um, so I think that definitely uh, influences the kind of work that I get. But um, but I do all sorts of things as well, sort of film stuff and things for radio podcasts for the BBC and things like that. So, um, but in terms of comics, I guess everyone sort of expects me to do a certain type of thing. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and so far, I'm living up to it, I guess. But um, who knows where it'll go? I guess it's yeah. the typecasting of comic books, right? <laughs> and also the burden of your name, of your last name, in some sense, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but um, I mean, looking at your coloring technique, right? Um, it, it seems like you do. 
if you don't do the conventional way of coloring, like you don't stay in line and you do leave spots of whites in it, um, uh, what what kind of influence is that um, that actually allows you to actually have this sort of choice? Is that because that you're actually close, uh, you're, you're working closely with uh, the artist as well as the writer or does the writer influence that or just the artist and you? Um, well, with um, with my hair is always in junkies. It's uh, the first page is actually colored by my dad, um, and then this page he, is it the page? Uh, yeah, I think that is it. That is that the first page? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think. So. Hmm. Yeah, so he colored it and sort of told me like this is how I want it to look. Ah, uh, okay. And then uh, because and that's one of the reasons I ended up doing it is because originally. He was going to color it himself, and then mm, okay. um, then he ran out of time, and he didn't want because um, he was working with uh, Betty uh, Wrightweiser, um, right. but he didn't want to uh, art direct her so closely. Whereas with me, he can sort of tell me what to do. Um, so that's how it started off, and then with Criminal, uh, he just sort of let me get on with it and choose how to do it myself and sort of figure out my own. Um, my own style, but yeah, he can because I think he just feels comfortable telling me to change things and uh, telling me I've got it wrong. So, um, but most of the time, no, he doesn't really get me to change anything, and um, he just sort of leaves me to get on with it, really. really. Yeah, that's good. I guess, um, I guess it's like yeah. father son bonding time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I've read in your previous interviews that you actually grew up reading a lot of Marvel and DC. And I mean, could you just tell us a couple of books that you're already fond of from like your childhood growing up? Um, I remember reading like The Flash and uh, and Spider Man, and it was all um, you know, and uh, quite a lot of Batman as well. And I was really into um, Batman Beyond, the the series mm. and the and the and the comic. Um, but um, yeah, it was all sort of. Because he just, my dad would get a you know a pile of uh, of comics every month when he was working for those publishers, and they give just give them everything that's out that month. Um, so I would just get to you know pick through it and see what caught my eye. Um, but yeah, most like a lot of Spider Man stuff like that, really. The the the, the basic the the usual suspect. Oh God, sorry, just my uh, Wait. just my camera slightly. Mm, no okay, sure. Which, which and, is surprising. Um, sorry, go on, Hancock. Yeah, no, um, I'm just um, writing on that same point, right? So um, at the moment, you've been drawing non-superhero stuff. Um, is there yeah. any plan for you to actually do some superhero, some capes, um, some exaggerated, no tight-fitting sh shirt yeah. rather than the uh, loose, typical, <laughs> realistic body type? <laughs> um, I've got no plans. It doesn't really interest me that much. I think it would have mm. to be... Um, like an interesting book. Um, I don't. I don't think I'd be very good at it. That's the thing as well. I, I don't think um, my stuff is sort of lively and bouncy enough to do good superhero stuff. Um, but you know, you never know further down the line. But no, no plans at the moment. Mm -hmm. I guess you know your father did used to draw for Marvel Zombies, and now he's doing one of the most acclaimed criminal books on in image so you know never say never right <laughs> yeah exactly so you said that you used to be an illustrator before you go into comics and you said you were doing stuff at the bbc and on podcasts like what, what sort of work were you doing was it like you know, so drawing I'm, people or I'm still, I'm still doing that as well so i'm doing i'm trying to juggle both uh, both aspects of it but um i do all sorts i i, I recently did um a podcast for uh what's his name Jarvis Cocker, um, he's got this new one out, or oh, he's rebranded re his uh, Wireless Night podcast, so that's all about sort of stories of uh, night people, um, and but like all sorts, I do whatever they ask me to, basically. Um, at the moment, I'm working on one about um, uh, like Olympic sports. Um, so um, uh, so it's all it's a yeah quite a mixture of stuff. Um, so, so when you're actually working on the podcast related, is that the artwork? That yeah, so it's, it's the yeah the, the sort of yeah the image on on the 
that's on, you know when you when you're looking at it on the scroll mm. the artwork for that. Yeah. Um, uh, just let me know if you actually can see your screen. Is this the one? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, yeah, just to actually give some visual for for people that as they are tuning in. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's so that's pretty fun, and I do um, you know whatever really people want me to do. So it ends up being a lot of um, Blu-ray covers for people like Arrow and Kino Lorber that are sort of like Criterion and they re-release old films with new artwork. Um, so that's always fun because it's basically like watching a film and then uh, getting to do some fan art of it, but I get paid. So it's uh, <laughs> so that's that's always a nice job. I mean, I guess you're literally drawing a commission for Lost in Translation right now, so it must be, you know, living the dream. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Can't complain. So, if I mean, if that's the case, right, uh, where's the, your passion lies? Is that uh, drawing? Or is that uh, movies related? Um, where does your passion really lie? Um, well, I do like... I just like drawing people a lot, basically. Mm. But um, yeah. but I'm really into film as well. Like, I try and go to the cinema at least once a week. Uh, Unfortunately, not now. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's what I miss the most at the moment. Uh, but um, yeah, I try and try and see as much as I can. Um, I don't really go in for specific genres or anything like that. People always expect me to be really into crime film. <laughs> But and I, and I am, but not you know. Probably being typecasted because of your work. Yeah, comic. yeah. <laughs> um, but then, uh, yeah, I see sort of whatever comes out. Um, so yeah, I mean, so it's it's great being able to do these sort of these commissions and uh, and yeah, film film uh, covers and stuff like that because it's um, it sort of combines the two things that I love. Um, but I would never sort of, you know, go off and make a film. I'm not, I'm not into that. I'm just, you know. Oh, um, like probably more towards like the uh, storyboarding, maybe? What's that? Storyboarding, because that's um, some form yeah. of a comics too, right? Yeah, I think yeah. I, I like having things that people get to see. That's the thing. I like having like a final product that mm -hmm. go out, whereas storyboards okay. get don't really get that's sketchy yeah but it gets the people, concept up yeah yeah i know a lot of people prefer that because they don't have to do the sort of boring polishing off mm -hmm. side of things they just get to do the storytelling bit um but i like doing both so yeah um, I don't, I, it does interest me but i don't think i'd do it as uh instead of comics or illustration so okay. do you have sorry i mean i'm just reading a comment from the uh, co uh i mean comment section i just put it on screen so james griffin just make uh just mentioned that make my loss in translation trim come true oh there Take you go. go yeah james is who i'm doing the portrait for the, the ah, okay that's good yeah. that's good yeah sorry sorry for the interruption tom yeah, yeah. No, no just a good question then if you're talking about you know w w do you have any sort of dream projects that you'd like to realize one day seeing as you know you've done a bit of illustration here and there comics a bit of film what is it one project that you've always wanted to do that you always want to set your eyes towards um it'd be really good to do like an official movie poster release that'd be great mm -hmm. but yeah. it's quite unlikely at the moment because no one uses illustrated posters um <laughs> Or probably, uh, probably just sign get get your side sign up with those um premium poster collectors like uh what Mondo, Mondo right yeah yeah Mondo yeah, Mondo. Like yeah it'd be great to be able to do a Mondo one um so if anyone's listening <laughs> let me up <laughs> yeah I mean they're they're usually you care remember the lines back in a thought bubble for Mondo posters just used to stretch so maybe one day yeah. you know yeah well people love them as well don't they I've got a few um let's see if I can show you actually um. There we go. See, I've got ah, posters. Okay, up. the Rushmore. Yeah, Rushmore. I've got a, that's a, a Matt Taylor Lion King one there. Ah, okay. And, uh, and uh, Star Wars one. So I've got a couple. So I, I do, I do love them as well. Um, I've got. Well, um, what's that? 
I, I mean that while your camera is up, right? Do you mind oh, yeah. give us a quick tour of your studio? I mean, oh, some yeah, of sure. us I'll, I'll would like to. Out. I mean, would like to actually peek behind the scene and just take a look at your studio yeah, a little so, bit, um, if you don't mind. <laughs> so this is the. So is it a shipping container? I'll, I'll go outside. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? Where are you? Where are you based right now? So it's yeah, I did the... wanted to actually ask you the last time when we test our connectivity. And you yeah, do have so... a lot of containers. Yeah, it's uh, so it's in the shipping container. It's mm -hmm. in Manchester. Um, and it's this new thing, and they've got um, loads of. I think there's 150 of us um, in here, and it's uh -huh. uh, so, so, and it's just really cheap, and you get like a little box, and you can do what you like to it. So, uh, yeah. So this is my one. So yeah, come through my bike up on the thing. Um, mm -hmm. So this is my collection of uh, prop guns and hats. <laughs> and, uh, the, the criminal vibe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's an absolute mess in here. Here's some pages that I had to take off my desk to do this commission. Um, so this is what I'm working on at the moment. Um, this is Brutal Dark number two. Um, so are we allowed to see those? Uh, or too uh, late? Yeah, you can't really tell what's going on. They'll, yeah. be out in a, it'll be out in a week. So this is how far I've come through it at the moment. This is, uh, I've done three pages. So, right, uh, okay. And then I'll have five more done by the end of the week. Well, by... Uh, are those on A3 sizes? Because it looks slightly smaller. Are those A3? Yeah, A3. Uh, oh, okay. so it's, it's I print it 150% and uh, mm -hmm. draw it. Okay. Like that. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a mess in here. I wasn't planning on showing. <laughs> showing <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, um, you, you can like stop wherever good. that you feel uncomfortable. So, yeah. Yeah, it's all fine. It's all fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, here's the... Uh, just the sort of trolley of stuff, and then my uh, my desk, which has got my Cintiq on it. So I mm. do most of all my pencils are on are digital. Um, okay. So I, I pencil my Cintiq, and then I and then I'll ink on my desk. Um, right. Okay. Uh, but with Texas Blood, it's all digital. So I I ink on I ink on here as well. Um, my sort of shelf of toys and uh, and books. Um, yeah, you probably can actually let us know what you read as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. See some great stuff. Ah, the Hellboy figure. I have that oh, yeah. just recently. It's so awesome. Um, and then back here is a sort of space where I, uh, I, I shoot all my photo reference here. So it's a bit of a, I just sort of throw things down here. But I've got, yeah, a new set of, sh another set of shelves. But this is all getting replaced very soon, hopefully. I want to build proper shelves up here. Um, <laughs> Setting yeah. up your real cave. For photo yeah. references, do you use yourself as figures? I do, yeah. Mm. So I, uh, I sh I'll sort of thumbnail everything, and then I'll, um, and then I'll shoot photo ref of every every pose, pretty much, um, and then go and find uh, any sort of extra reference that I need for you know buildings or locations, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, all the most of the figures are usually me, and then I'll, uh, you know, swap the faces out or do whatever. Um, so they're always quite short legged, and uh, they'll they'll stand they'll stand like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, taking taking a question from the floor as well. Uh, what's the best advice your dad ever gave you about um, art and the industry? Um, I don't know. The only advice he's ever given me is if you have belt loops on your trousers, wear wear a belt. That's uh, <laughs> that, that's like his famous one bit of advice. So, uh, <laughs> but he but he helps me on on everything. Uh, so he like designed Texas Blood, um, so he's there because I I don't know how to do all that sort of stuff like he does. So he'll uh, he'll take the files and he'll and he'll lay it out for me. Um, and make sure, and just double check everything and make sure everything's good before I send it off um, and things like that. So it's good to have him there just uh, to stop spot any mistakes or you know because he knows what he's he's been doing it for however long. So it's good to have just that, that person with experience to to help out when you need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the next um, comment is also coming from Julius. Um, whoa, five five pages by the end of the week. How do you actually build up the speed and work ethic? Um, 
I have a deadline, so I've got to do it. Um, <laughs> well, I started. Um, I started inking yesterday, so I did three pages yesterday, um, and then I've got yeah five pages, and I've got then I've got to color it as well, um, and it'll be out on um, on Wednesday at some point. So I've just got to crack on, really. It'll be probably some late nights. But um, I can usually do like two and a half pages a day of inks um, and maybe three or four pages a day of pencils. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, just get in and do it. <laughs> I, don't, I, I try not to think about it too much and just keep going until it's done and then I can go home. Um, so you're a person that requires a studio get out from home to actually get your work done yeah i i prefer it like that i used to have a studio in my house um mm -hmm. but then i moved to a much smaller flat so i can't fit my workspace in there so i i got this and i find it much better just it's not very far from my house it's only a 10 minute walk and i come on my bike so it's even mm -hmm. even quicker um so it's nice just to get that space and i think the journey to work is nice and uh it sort of separates it you can't get distracted too much and you can just get it done whereas when i was at home there was always something else to, that i needed to do you know like uh, like clean and and tidy and, and sort things out um, whereas here it's just work time so yeah i much i much prefer having somewhere separate to go yeah at least you have that journey to actually write away from home. I mean, write away from home as well as write away from work when you're done. Yeah, exactly. But it does mean that I have to stay until it's all done. Like, there's no, you know, just popping back in to, to do one thing quickly and things like that, which, mm -hmm. I, which was very useful when I could do that. But, you know, I have my iPad and I can do basic stuff on if I need to without coming back into the studio um mm. but i try and keep it as separate as i can really that's actually pretty cool that you sort of create your own environment especially since you know this kind of work you dedicate your own hours you need to have the discipline to put in do you ever find yourself sleeping in the studio though or just spending the nights um no i try and keep to really regular hours so i'll come in at about half past nine and i'll work until six or seven um mm. and then i'll then i'll be done I, I set my I, I try to set myself realistic um, sort of deadlines and goals so I'm not trying to fit 10 pages in in a day and have to stay overnight I try and I try and set myself a limit and be sensible with it um, just so I don't go mad and I think this this definitely helps that because I can't just because you know when I get hungry in the evening I have to go home and eat I can't just I can't just go home, eat, and then go back into the studio and finish, what, which is what I would do when it was at home. Um, now I have to get things done, and then I'm, and then I'm done. So it's, uh, I think it's much better to do it like that. Um, but then I know some people much prefer working in the evenings. So, but and also all my friends um, have normal jobs, you know, so mm. they. So I, I like to fit it in with that, so I can see them and you know have a social life. So uh, yeah, well, after work, so much, you have something so like now, an but... after work, right? You set awesome. your you, you set your clock with a working hour so that you can actually just have after work happy time, happy hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, Jacob needs to pop to the, uh, uh, go to the pub, right, with his friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gotta have the pint. It's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> Not the moment. Oh. Though. All the pubs are shut now. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's the new norm, though. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I was actually seeing uh Chin Che actually leaving some comments saying that brutal dark is gritty. So um, could you actually tell us a little bit more regarding on brutal dark? Um, uh, yeah. I, so I have an image. Uh, it's a monthly eight-page story that comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, every you know whenever I get it done, it's on it's on Patreon. So um. Mm -hmm. I can just sort of do it when I have time between other books. Because I'm working on Brutal Dark, um, Texas Blood, Texas and, Blood, and another image book as well. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to squeeze it in when I have the time. Um, 
so it's good to have that flexibility. Um, but we started it just because when the pandemic hit, we didn't know whether the Texas blood was coming out. Um, because obviously all the comic shops shut and then there was the whole thing with Diamond and um, it seemed like things were very uncertain as to whether they were still happening. Um, mm. So we yeah. sort of stopped working on Texas Blood um, for the time being and and we're like, oh, well, what, what can we do now? Um, and Chris had this idea knocking around for years. He actually posted on the Patreon... Um, some old pages that he drew himself um, mm. when he was 18. So about 10, 10 years ago, um, he had this idea of for Brutal Dark. And it's it's very similar. The first page is actually very similar to how he drew it 10 years ago. Mm. Um, so so we, we just did it because we're like, oh, well, we've got nothing else to be doing. Um, and we wanted to put something out. Mm -hmm. And that seemed like the best way to do it, just to do it ourselves. And people were obviously after new things to entertain themselves um everyone was stuck inside with nothing to do and no comic shop was open so we just sort of uh, thought well might as well just put it online and everyone can guess it then um yeah. and and it's only a dollar so we uh we tried to make it as easy and accessible for everyone because obviously everyone's out of work as well so um, yeah that's true i mean the uh, things have no been one's got any hard. money to be spending on expensive books so yeah well i guess we got to check it out hancock that's our job now yeah i, I think I, i'm i am actually googling it while while he was actually talking about it yeah he looks like pretty awesome um yeah, so like, uh what's your Texas. patreon account you we probably can actually do a shout out here um oh, yes, it it's condon is that Condon yeah. Phillips? Yeah, Condon, yeah. 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 Uh, let, let me just put it into the chat and uh, just put a pin to it. Yeah, so the, the story is it's like um, a 1930s detective story, mm -hmm. pulp, yeah. pulp detective. Uh, so, like, the, the vibe I was going for was sort of if, um, if Indiana Jones was a private detective, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. That's what I was sort of aiming for. And I think that's what Chris is aiming for as well. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it, it's sort of, it's a bit dark and a bit gritty, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. And it's, uh, I think okay. it's pretty good fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, every sort of five or six weeks, there'll be a new $1 issue out um, for the foreseeable future. I think Chris has got plans to, to keep it going at least over a year, I think, and then we'll hopefully then be able to collect it up into a book and uh, and put it out through uh, whoever will put it out. Basically, no no solid plans yet, but hope that's the plan. I think. Mm -hmm. And any plan to actually put it maybe on a print through crowdfunding? Because I think we with the publisher actually stop. I mean. Publisher is actually publishing less physical books right now. Uh, do you want? Yeah. I mean, would you actually you guys consider the crowdfunding route? Or self publishing, um, even? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely worth looking into. I think a lot of people are doing that now, aren't they? And it's because uh, now, yeah, it's less likely that you're going to get an advance on a book as well from a publisher. Um, so I think a lot of people are looking into that, that whole idea. But. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we. It might change in the next um, in the next year, but I don't think we've got a big enough audience to to fund it like we'd want to. Um, but we never. You know, I don't know. We'll have to see. I guess if it if it seems like it's possible, then it's definitely something that'd be interested in doing. But um, yeah, we haven't really discussed how we're going to do it yet. Yeah, I, I guess a uh, good thing is that. You have two extra person that's actually interested right now, <laughs> at least in the in, in in this particular room, and probably a few more in the chat box. So yeah, I've I've actually got a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first question is, how do you balance your work between books and commissions, or you know, seeing as you're doing one now? Um, quite badly. Uh, <laughs> I, well, when uh, lockdown first started here, I I did um. I did a, num a load of Indiana Jones drawings. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I, mean, yeah. I did one a day for a week, and then I and I just put them online every every evening and sold and sold each one as it went as I did it. Um, and they sold really well. Everyone seemed to really like them. So I uh, and then I was like, oh well, I'll do five commissions next week. And um, people people seem to like them as well. And it went really well, but then I, I agreed to them and then realised how much work I've got to do. And uh, and, it, and I ended up taking three weeks to do them or four weeks to do them. So it, um, I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to take any more on. But then I needed something to draw for this, so I took on a couple. Um, <laughs> but I just try and... Uh, I, it's hard because I, I I do like doing them and it's a nice break from doing comic work and it's it's nice to just do like a quick drawing and get it and get it done and that's like the end that's it's quite satisfying just to sort of tick off jobs like that um but it also ends up taking way more time than I think it will so I, I'm trying not to do them <laughs> but um you know, every so often it's fun to do these things, mm. but I'm trying just to focus on on the comics at the moment because they're just the, it's just backing up, and I'm get I realize I've got loads to do in a very short amount of time. So well, I'm thank you very to... much for agreeing to this interview. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's, it's a Saturday anyway. I wasn't going to be at work. <laughs> um, I've got another question. You you mentioned something quite interesting about how it's getting quite difficult to have an advance on a book. Isn't that what the image model is, no? Or I mean, I, I don't know what it's like behind the scenes. Um, well, for Brutal Dark, I don't have an advance on that. That's mm. uh, all back end. So it's, um, but I think it depends on how confident they are that you'll sell. So mm-hmm. obviously, um, when I when I started Bru- uh, Texas Blood, sorry. Um, that was the first thing I did, and no, they had no idea if it was going to sell or not. Obviously, I've been doing the colours for Criminal and things like that, but doesn't really uh, guarantee any sales. So I guess it's hard for them then to offer me uh, an advance because they don't know how much to, to I could have. Um, but I think if you're more established, it's much easier to get a, to get an advance from Image and well whoever um but yeah now that i think they i think they stopped training advances for a couple of months um <laughs> after diamond uh, mm. stopped paying um but yeah. i think it's back on track now or we'll get in there yeah yeah i mean just further going into this right uh, what do you think will be the future of comics then um you know obviously you've been doing some some that's in the future as well um like releasing pages on your patreon page that people can actually read on what do you think will be a future like uh do does people still go on print um would people get away from the norm of actually buying the the single issues and probably wait for a complete story and purchase those uh, what do you think of that yeah i think I think there might be more. I don't. I think people still want to buy um, physical things. I, I. I don't think there's that many people that want to buy digital copies of things because um, mm-hmm. it's not really any cheaper, and you don't get a book. <laughs> there's nothing physical to keep. Um, and I know <laughs> I'm the same, but a lot of people in in the sort of comics world like to collect. Yes. They, yes. they want a complete set. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that that sort of idea gets lost with digital things. Um, yes, that's true. I mean, you have a folder, or probably you just have a, a category that this particular series is here. It's actually very different. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, I think people are still going to want to buy physical things. I don't think that's going to change. Um, but I can. Well, I think it, it's already sort of happening. It seems that people are doing more um, bigger books and less monthlies. Um, so, like uh, November, the Mac Fraction book with Elsa, that um, 
that com- that's coming out every was it every six months something like that and uh, in a hardback. And I think yeah. a lot more people are going to start doing that sort of way of doing it. Um, but you know, I don't know. People might people love monthlies, don't they? So. I mean, even Criminal is moving towards the graphic novel format too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got yeah, two two graphic novels. Well, the collection of Criminal and uh, and Pulp are both yeah coming out as uh, graphic novels. So yeah, I, I think there is definitely that, and people, and also it means that you can get like a nice hardback. Um, and that's I I don't really buy monthlies. I I tend to buy the odd one digitally. And then I will wait for the trade, or the or the hardback. I much prefer having a a big substantial book rather than loads of monthlies, because um, it's just nice to have uh, you know a nice a nice designed substantial hardback. So, what have you been buying recently, both digitally and in print? Mm-hmm. Um, I I just got that big Parker um, book. Oh. Parker, ah, Darwin okay. Cook, right? The Martini edition one. Uh, oh, but the Martini edition actually missed out one book, I believe. Is yeah, it? I think it's there's a new one coming out. Correct. Uh, yeah. The third one's coming out um, soon because uh, there's new stories going in it as well. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just got the uh, the second one, so I've been reading that uh, this week. And I've just got uh, I've got a few things on order. Oh, I've read um, Creature of the Night. Uh, mm, that was really creature, good. Creature of the Night. Oh, yeah, the new, Bat- the new Batman. Um, oh right, uh, John Paul Leon. John Paul Leon. Batman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah, he has really a he because of his health condition. I mean. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that hardbacks just come out. So mm-hmm. um, oh, that, so I, just, I mean, John Paul is actually one of my a uh, guy. That I should go to for new stuff. I mean, anything that he draws, like a uh, black, the shadowy stuff, is like just just brilliant. Yeah, his yeah, his stuff's great. And so, yeah, I just read that. I really like that. Um, I've got uh, Bog Bodies on the way. Um, Bog Body De- by uh, De- uh, De- Declan De- Declan De- Shelby. Yeah, yeah Shelby's book. Yeah, Shelby's book. Um, so I've got that coming on the way. What else? Uh, I've just put an order in for loads of things. Um, the new, the new Hilda book. Have you, have you huh? seen those? The, the Hilda Luke Pearson books. Have you seen no, those? No, never heard of it. Um, hold on. Oh yes, yes, Hilda. Yeah. Hilda. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, hold on, I've got one here. I, I used to see them in a gosh a lot actually. Yeah, these ones. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. so yeah. there's a new one of these out, so I've got that on the way. But his stuff's just really nice. Uh, it has that Seth White where one page has like tiny panels with. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like all this sort of stuff. Yeah, for those tuning in, is some, some recommendation from your usual kip and kip and types. <laughs> I'll have a look. What else have I got new? Um, Oh, uh, Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. That's great. Uh-huh. The Mariko, uh, Tamaki book. Have you seen this one? Oh, if you have not, no. This one's really nice. It's really so, uh, Laura Dean. I mean, yeah, Tamaki is always a pretty solid. It, it, I mean, the, the title itself reminded me of those uh, Japanese manga nowadays that they, uh, they sort of actually entice yeah. you telling you, I mean, it gives you a synopsis of the story that they're trying to tell. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It has a long title to it. Um, most, oh, I'm going to check most, that Tamaki book out. Yeah, I really, I really, really enjoyed it. Most of my new books are at home, that's the thing, because they're, they're next to my bed. Yeah, for okay. me. But, um, mm. well, sorry, I got another another thing on order as well. I can't remember what it was. But, I yeah. guess you're good to get some reading lockdown through, right? Yeah, I've been, reading, I've been reading a lot of novels more. Um, mm. I saw like the first few weeks of lockdown, I uh, I only worked half days, and then mm-hmm. and just spent the morning 
reading. So I read like 12 novels in two weeks. Wow. And then okay. What were you reading? I realized that I've got... Um, he sounds like you. Work. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been reading then? I was reading sort of like um, some murder mystery stuff. Um, like I read uh, Murder on the Orient Express for the first oh, time. Amazing book, yeah. I read it really um, recently too. So that was really good. And there's some sort of like more uh, modern stuff. Um, what is it? The Guest List. That was a, quite a good one. That was uh, a murder mystery of um, all set around a wedding on like a remote island. Mm. Um, and it goes through all the guests and, it, and you sort of uh, you experience it from the different points of view of each guest. Um, as it um, as it the story sort of unfolds and reveals itself, so that was really good. Um, and um, the first, what was it called? The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Um, that was a good one. That was um, another murder mystery thing, but it was this guy kept reliving the same day, sort of like Groundhog Day. The Groundhog Day kind of vibe but he would wake up in a different person's body every day um oh, okay. for a week and he'd have to solve this solve this murder uh within the week otherwise he gets reset and he can't remember anything um mm-hmm. so that was that was really cool it was sort of like um do you see source code yeah yeah with, uh, reliving it to try and solve the the crime that it was that sort of thing but um but it was like a period set piece um Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, so, stuff. some stuff like that. Um, but yeah, all sorts really. Mm. I read like I tend to just read whatever comes out as well. Like same as with films, I, I don't really go in for genre. I just uh, read whatever comes out and looks good. You know, <laughs> I'll right. go into the bookshop and just browse the uh, the new releases and and see what the uh, sort of piqued my interest but um i really enjoyed the memory police have you seen that um memory. That new, that, the memory police it's like memory it's this, police yeah i, I bought it because i really liked the cover um mm. which is obviously what you're not meant to do but um <laughs> literally that looks cool actually i'm looking at it now it seems interesting i might check that out yeah i really liked it it's sort of um the this sort of police force um they erase people's collective memories of things so like you you won't remember what tree blossom is anymore mm. and it's sort of they they just erase all these things um and it gets you know progressively worse as it goes on but um yeah it's, it's a cool idea so i guess that um you've been reading quite a bit um any plan of actually having your own story that you want to actually let other people Becoming a writer, maybe. Yeah, becoming a writer. Um, I have like ideas, but I don't think I could put them together properly. I'd have to work with a writer, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I don't know if I'd want to do that either, really, because I don't think it would be fair to the writer to be like, well, I want you to do this. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but I have also, better story to tell. So. Yeah, but also I wouldn't want to, them to take my story that I had an idea for it and go off on a different thing that I wasn't into. I don't know. I think I'm better off just sticking to drawing. Fair play. I mean, who knows? Maybe one day we'll see written by Jacob Phillips, you know, yeah. Yeah. or somewhere. Or just yeah. graphic novel by Jacob Phillips. Everything done by him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What to say? I haven't got any plans. So, so do you have? I mean, um, on the coloring side, you've been doing it digitally. Do you have any traditional work that you've been doing? In traditional painting, color. yeah, coloring. Um, no, I have. I've never done any um, so sort of like traditional coloring before. Um. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Yeah, just because day. it's comfortable, or just no chance of exploring. Um, I don't know. I've never really considered it. It's just, mm, okay. it's just so much easier, and it's yeah. You can undo. <laughs> with coloring, I always have to 
there's always like a pretty tight deadline. Mm, so okay. it's it's good. Like digital is just so quick and easy. Um, you can just sort of get it done and not have to worry about it. You can, you know, any mistakes you make, you can just go in and change, and it just makes everything so much uh, so much easier. Mm. So, who would you say that your biggest influences are as an artist have been? It's getting yourself into comic books and into illustrations, any other sources of inspiration? Um, yeah, like I used to be really into. Well, I still am, um, but like things like Dan Clouds and things like mm -hmm. and that sort of photographic side of things. Um, I I don't think I really draw like them, but. Uh, and like Adrian to me, uh, to me and people like that, um, that, that was the sort of thing that I, and uh, Love and Rockets and things like that, you know, um, that was what mm. really got me into comics properly, I think. Sort of. Love and Rockets, Jimmy Hen and this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that sort of thing. What, like, after, cause I think when I was younger, I read, yeah, superhero stuff, and then I sort of fell out of it a bit. And uh, and then I then I discovered all this whole, this whole other side of things um, that wasn't superheroes, and I think that's what really sort of rekindled my interest in it. Um, so How about more of the European side, like the French? Because you guys are actually I don't know, probably wrong wrong country to actually mention French, but. Uh, Aside, I mean, maybe the Italian, um, because you, you guys are actually relatively close to that region, right? Have you actually explored those sort of uh, comics as well? Um, not really. Uh, I have been reading these. Um, oh, look. I've been reading these recently because they've been coming out in the, in English. The Shadow Killer. Okay. Have you seen these? That's sort of... Um, What's the name of it? Is it Jerome? Uh, yeah, Jerome K. Jerome uh, mm. Blosh. But um, oh. yeah, but it's got uh, no. sort of the, the, the layout it itself is very really European. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I think these these are French books. Yeah. They're all they're recently coming out in. Uh, and they are translated. Okay. Yeah. They're, yeah. So I think they're on. I don't know whether the third one's out yet, but um, this is this is the first one. I've got the first two. Um, mm -hmm. But this sort of thing, I, I really, really like. It's sort of like, yeah, it's just very French, isn't it? It's got that sort of. Uh, <laughs> it's somewhere. It sits somewhere between Tintin and uh, an Asterix. Yes. With the, uh, except um, for a uh, more gritty and realistic drawings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, erotic. You know, it's got got the whole lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that sort of stuff I love, but I'm not. I don't really know much about the sort of European scene that much. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely something like whenever I see anything, I'm like, oh yeah, it looks amazing. But then a lot of it isn't translated into English yet. Mm -hmm. So I end up so I so you know, you'll look at the pictures and then not be able to read it. So um <laughs> but yeah, it all looks amazing, doesn't it? I mean, are there any I books that you've just picked up because it just looked great? Pretty much every book that I buy, that's why I pick it up. Um, <laughs> I, I never buy a book if I don't like the artwork. Um, unless I know that the story is going to be really, really good. Um, but I, I pretty much buy everything I buy because of I like the drawings. Um, so, yeah, pretty much, every, <laughs> pretty much everything is just because of that. So it's hard to really uh, narrow it down. <laughs> I mean, has there been something which you picked up that you said, this looks great, but it reads terribly? Um, not off the top of my head. Uh, uh, not, yeah, not really. I can't really think of anything that, I, that I've, I've sort of felt like that. There's like a lot of things that I'm like, oh, that was sort of fine. But um, I can't remember ever picking something up and being like, oh, that was terrible. Um, <laughs> when it didn't look terrible. And, and also, if the artwork's nice, and, then, and that's the reason I picked it up, like, either I won't even read it anyway, 
and I'll just look at the pictures. Um, or I'll read it and be like, oh, and the story was fine, but the drawings are great. So it's always like, um, there's always that redeeming quality to them. Yeah, at least at least you get something out of it at the end of the day. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I got, I got um, I think we are actually approaching to the end of the session. Um, and you're you're not done yet, right? I believe that you're just halfway there. Yeah, about halfway. I've got a whole head. To draw. I don't know if you can see the pencils. Yeah, that's still scarlet. Your hands. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Actually, I can't see the pencil. I thought that you actually just draw it, just like uh, like um. I mean, if you are here familiar with Kim Jong Gi, you're actually just drawing it, just. Oh out yeah. Of free yeah, ink. Yeah, free. yeah, I can't do that. Just into then, paper and immediately that things come up. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just ridiculous. I don't know how he does that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't do that. <laughs> no, I've got um, very pale blue it, it, digital it, pencils. Oh, is that Scarlett your answer? Yeah. Hold on, see yeah. If I can. Is that any clearer? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. We can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you see go. so yeah, yeah. So I, I I did that this morning on the computer, printed it out, and then I've got the. Uh, I've just been inking over the top. Um, I wish I could just draw out my head like that, just straight <laughs> on. But my head doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, just a quick question, right? Um, well, considering that I'm actually seeing this, as, um, that's something that actually occurred to me. Um, in most of your books, you're actually drawing realistic person. So do you mm -hmm. do you refer to someone or that person is actually in your mind when you're actually drawing? Um, all, well... They're all sort of, they're all based on photos of me, but um, well, I'll, I'll sometimes I'll find like an actor or someone like that um, mm. that I can I can sort of draw inspiration from, but then I sort of I fit them around my face, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. it's not quite um, I I don't want it to look exactly like whoever. So um, Sheriff Joe Bob in uh, Texas Blood is based on Sam Elliott. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I do a lot of that sort of thing. And um, Randy in in Texas Blood, from he's in issue two onwards. Um, mm -hmm. He was sort of loosely based on Harrison Ford. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't really look like him, but just like I can't remember what film it was that he was based off. But uh, there's glasses and hair and his okay. sort of general look were based on that on on him. And then they sort of tend to um, evolve as I draw them. And they'll look less and less like the original starting point, and more like their own thing, um, which is what I try and do anyway. Um, and it'll sort of they'll sort of look, you know, like themselves. That's the aim. But, um, we'll see if it works. But I think most most of the time they just look a bit like me. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's that's the same of anyone that any any comic artist that uses. Photo reference, there's always a bit of them in it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I think this is actually about the end of our session. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank Jacob, you for much, actually, yeah. um, you. being you online. Guys, uh, it has been a great chat. Uh, I think I'm sure that we have actually more questions. Um, there is a last question uh, from Chin Che. Did you, did you meet Jamie Hernandez personally? Oh, uh, um, no, I didn't. I saw him uh, at um, the Huntington Beach uh, mm -hmm. NCS Festival last year, um, but I didn't actually get to meet him. He was he was hanging around, but I didn't speak to him, but right. I would love to. <laughs> maybe, maybe one someday. day, yeah. Yeah, maybe someday. Yeah. So all the best. All the best to your future endeavor. And good Thank luck you. with your book. Looking forward Good to luck with the five pages. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.